project for Destroyer 1941 began in October of 1939 when a questionnaire was circulated through the Office of Chief of Naval Operations where a series of questions were asked in regards to previous destroyers, specifically were those destroyers adequate in filling the intended role of being anti-submarine and torpedo boats, or were they simply too large in favor of obtaining more gunpowder to fight in a battle line, and what were the chances of destroyers actually getting into a gunfight? Realistically, these questions cannot be adequately answered without destroyers being tested in combat, which the United States Navy, as of 1939, was not in active combat. So, previous destroyer designs could merely be analyzed through their design characteristics, meaning no new ideas could really be presented compared to the initial designing phase. Responses to this questionnaire would result in loose requirements for the destroyer of 1941. Namely, the destroyer standard displacement could not exceed 1,500 tons, like previous classes had. It needs to have an improved anti-aircraft battery, utilizing the new 1.1-inch anti-aircraft gun, and it needs to have better protection over its machinery spaces. On the 16th of October 1939, the General Board convened in a meeting to discuss the armament of the destroyer. As a result, they decided that 10 torpedo tubes would be adequate given four reloads per tube. The ship would have to have either four or five main battery 5-inch guns, and it needs to have at least 28 depth charges. During that meeting, the first roadblock in the design phase was hit when, discussing the depth charge arrangement, the General Board was only aware of the Y-gun, which required a centerline arrangement, which meant that it would reduce the main armament, or the torpedo armament, none of which anyone was willing to sacrifice. The only real alternative was to make a longer destroyer, but this in turn would increase its displacement, and that was also not seen as a favorable suggestion. Without an agreement being made, discussions around the depth charges were temporarily sidelined in favor of discussing speed. A few members of the board asked that the ship have no less than a speed of 38 knots, while others said that no less than 35 or 36 knots would be adequate, as the under-design Iowas and the in-service Yorktowns had a speed of roughly 33 knots, which meant a few knots speed extra was good enough for the destroyers. It was pointed out that for a speed of 35 knots, existing machinery could be used. For 36 knots, the same machinery could be used with minor modifications and without significantly increasing the size of the ship. But in order to obtain a speed of 38 knots, the ship would need to be roughly 10 to 15 percent larger, which was unacceptable. The final point discussed during this meeting was issues surrounding the new Sims class destroyers, which were just entering service. Those vessels had excessive top weight, and as a result, their double bottoms had to be filled with lead. It was suggested that for the new destroyer, the width be increased by nearly two feet, which would increase the ship's overall tonnage by roughly 20 tons, but this would create a more stable ship. The day after the meeting concluded, on the 17th of October 1939, the first official characteristics for the destroyer 1941 were set forth. The standard displacement was now not to exceed 1,600 tons. It needed to have an accommodation for at least four 5-inch 38 caliber dual-purpose guns, two quintuple torpedo tubes on the center line with four reloads apiece, 28 depth charges with two racks, improved stability, rugged construction, and it needs to have a speed of 36 knots with an endurance of 6,500 nautical miles at 15 knots. The anti-aircraft battery would be made up of no less than four 50 caliber machine guns. Four designs were created as a result of these requirements. The first one was essentially the Benson class destroyer, but modified to meet the new characteristics. The second design was a ship with four 5-inch 38 caliber guns in four single mounts, with most of the armament space being placed towards depth charges and torpedoes. The last two designs were identical, with one major exception. They both had four 5-inch 38 caliber guns, with one dual mount and two single mounts. The difference between these designs was the location of the mounts, with one design having the dual mount forward and singles aft, with the other having the singles forward and the dual aft. In the beginning of November, six more designs based off the first four were created, 
but ultimately all of these designs were seen as unsatisfactory as they were either too large or did not meet the specifications different admirals wanted. As a result of the disagreements over the first set of designs, on the 24th of November 1939, the General Board asked for a further four designs to be created. For these new designs, a new depth charge rack would be implemented, as the Ordnance Department had developed the K-Gun, which did not require a centerline mounting, and this meant that the depth charge racks would no longer battle for the centerline space with the main armament and torpedo launchers. All of these designs created radically different ships, as Design 2A had a displacement of 1,700 tons, Design 8 had a displacement of 1,800 tons, Design 9 at 1,900 tons, and Design 10 at 2,000 tons. Design 10 is possibly the most interesting of this batch because it was designed with the intention of giving the ship a top speed of 38 knots, which meant it was significantly longer than the other designs, with an overall length of 369 feet. Compare this with Design 8 that had a length of 355 feet. By this point, the General Board had an increasing interest in armor protection, and so Design 10 turned into 10B, C, and D, with increasing armor, increasing length, and subsequently an increased displacement to 2,100 tons. On the 9th of January 1940, Design 10E was submitted, and it had the following characteristics. It would have an overall length of 376 feet, a beam of 39 feet 8 inches, and a draft of 13 feet 9 inches. It would have two geared turbines, producing 60,000 shaft horsepower, giving the ship a top speed of 36 knots, with an endurance of 6,500 nautical miles at 15 knots. The main armament would consist of five 5-inch five 38 caliber dual-purpose guns in five single mounts with two forward and three aft. It would have two quintuple mount torpedo launchers with four reloads apiece. It would also have 28 depth charges. The anti-aircraft armament would be made up of one quadruple 1.1-inch 1 .1 automatic cannon with four 50 caliber machine guns. The ship's side armor would be made up of 3 4 inch armor plate with the deck being made up of half-inch plate. This design was approved for construction on the 27th of January, 1940, and the first ship, DD-445, was laid down on the 2nd of October, 1941, and it was commissioned on the 30th of June, 1942. This would become the USS Fletcher, which would hand its name down to a total of 175 ships. The Fletcher-class destroyers would go on to be one of the most known destroyers ever produced in history, and they are destroyers that the United States remains proud of today. While these destroyers had some drawbacks, they were not enough to prevent them from being considered overall excellent designs, and their war service and survivability certainly showed them to be amongst the greatest destroyers designed in their period. With that having been said, I have nothing more to add on to this topic for today. So. If you have learned something new in this video, why not leave a like and a comment down below, and have a wonderful day.